Thousands of New Brunswickers are dealing with the threat of more damaging floods more often. This week, CBC New Brunswick has a series of stories on spring flooding and the connection to climate change. And one of the big questions is, how do we adapt to changing weather? Slobodan Simonovic is a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Western Ontario in London. And he's a researcher on flood prevention and management. He's on the line. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the program. One of the big questions when it comes to flooding is whether we should focus on mitigation of damage for future flooding or simply adapt to changing conditions. Is one better than the other? <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to answer. The um, key question is to look at really the local conditions and find out the appropriate combination of these two. Uh, I like to say there is no silver bullet. Uh, the combination between the mitigation options with some adaptation options will be always the best. Uh, however, each location, our country is very large, and conditions are very different in different parts of the country, uh, do, require, do require very specific concern and consideration of these local conditions in choosing the best combination of these two. Uh, different approaches. What would you say for New Brunswick in this case along the St. John River? Um, I, uh, I was already asked, I think, uh, earlier about this uh, choices that New Brunswick is probably or should be considering. Um, if you look at the experience from other places across the country, uh, the, the, the difference between the New Brunswick, St. John's River, and uh, flooding in that particular region compared to other regions is the population. Uh, the population of uh, in this region is smaller, and if you look at the potential cost of, uh, let's say, some uh, structure and mitigation measures, it will be very hard to justify that their implementation, their choice with the benefit-cost ratio. So uh, the, the, my sense will be that the New Brunswick should be probably starting by looking at some non-structural options. And by non-structural options, I mean either regulation or um, uh, implementation of the existing regulations uh, in a most forceful way. So but, are you talking uh, there well, about ad- ad- adapting to what's coming? Yeah, I, I was just trying to say that Basically, thinking, uh, the, the looking and making the choice between different measures and selecting the appropriate for the location must look a little bit longer time ahead than we usually do. Politicians are functioning on a very short uh, term basis, uh, obviously, the election cycle. And uh, floods as a natural phenomena but natural phenomena that's today affected by the long-term climate change do require a long-term consideration. Um, We cannot just look at the problem with this particular flood and find out some uh, measures that will be kind of immediate response. We have to look at how this flood fits into prediction of the future changing conditions, how these longer-term conditions uh, may justify different combination of measures uh, uh, in order in order to take uh, to take that long-term slower uh, type of change into consideration. But in order to do that, how do we then meet the challenges if there is another serious flood next year? Well, I think we have to start immediately. The, the sad story in case of natural disasters and floods in particular is that usually the response and the reaction of the general population, media, politicians, all other decision makers is very, very short. Um, you have a window of opportunity after the disaster that the tension is very high to do something and if you miss that window of opportunity you know the attention of those who are making decisions are on something else so so kind of dealing with the next flood dealing with the immediate uh, in the future i think require immediate action and and reviewing the you know reviewing the conditions of the current flood reviewing the impact uh, coming up with some kind of intermediate measures that will lead to these kind of longer-term solutions, 
and also provide provide some protection from the short term or the next year and the year after uh, potentially changing conditions. Do you have examples of other places that have been able to do that successfully, make some adaptations so that things start to improve year over year? Yeah, yeah. I I, I have participated in the um, um, IJC, International Joint Commission Task Force on the Red River. Before joining the uh, University of Western Ontario, I was professor at the University of Manitoba and at that time. I lived through the 1997 flood of the century, was appointed to IJC, and the procedure that we took, uh, that that task force took, was really to look at immediate uh, uh, immediate situation and come up with the so-called the interim report, interim suggestions for the next year, and then we spent, you know, three, four years of studying the floods and coming up with the uh, uh, longer-term solutions. Something like that, I think it's appropriate. So that takes uh, that takes experience of the current kind of flood, provides immediate response to the concerns of the population, but it's taking into consideration that long-term, I think, change that I was referring to earlier. And when you have a, a, an area that has settled, even if it is a small population that has settled over centuries along a river, moving things away or mitigating flood damage is complicated. It is. That is then, yes, you know, I said there's no easy solution, there are no silver solutions. But you have to take into consideration that flooding is a natural phenomenon. Um, in rivers, um, fortunately, do need space in order to accommodate that variation of flow that's occurring, you know, during different seasons. You have a right now the, the activity within the Western Europe where the rivers that have been channeled for a very long period of time are being transformed uh, in order to provide the space to accommodate this uh, uh, variations. Um, providing space for rivers is essential. In Europe, it actually takes getting rid of a very serious structural measures, dikes and parts of the very old cities in order to do that. In Canada, we have a shorter history, and I think uh, uh, you know, providing that space for the river will be easier. I'm not saying it's easy, but it will be easier, and uh, we have to take into we have to take into consideration the kind of local conditions and how the people who been living in these areas for a longer period of time can be helped in the best possible way in order to in order to minimize the future damage. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your expertise on this. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Bye now. Bye-bye. Slobodan Simonovic is a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Western Ontario. Our reporter, Hadil Ibrahim, has been looking into the issue of adaptation and what New Brunswickers can do. You can read her story on our website at cbc.ca slash nb. And sorry about that. The phone line there was a little tough to hear, and so I apologize for that. Sometimes that happens when we call people.